yeah, my name's Chris Lana, and I played um, Vernon Shivers, better known as Cling Film, in uh, between series in series eight to twelve, I think it was. I think so. Yeah. Um, well, the the start of um, the start of Kling film was I don't think he, he wasn't really meant to be in it as much as he ended up being. I think they just needed a character for a couple of episodes to provide a, a relief for somebody on. Oh, I can't really remember. It's a long time ago. But uh, essentially, I, I was it was a, an, an ordinary audition like actors go for all the time for another part. And it was only a small part. It wasn't meant to be for serious worth of work. Um, so yeah, it was a small part and um, just an ordinary interview. And I think the casting director, Corinne Rodriguez had seen me in, I think I'd been in a production of Roald Dahl's The Twits. And I think she'd seen that in which I did play a bit of a twit or well, Mr. Twit. So I think she thought, oh, yes, that might do for the film. But I don't think they had, I don't think they really had in mind, um, the, I mean, I turned up for the interview and they said, do something funny, you know, and I don't think they had, they, I don't think they minded. So I think they had a, that day, a whole load of actors come through the door to whom they'd said, do something, be funny or something like that. And um, so I did my version of that. And um, there we go. Got the part, which was great. They were dotted about all over the place, actually, mostly in South East London, which was good for me because I lived in South East London at the time. Um, and the, the the studios were down in Long Lane by Borough um, Tube Station, um, which was a big old rambling kind of warehousey, like a film studio. You went in, and you just there's random buildings around everywhere, but uh, you know that had the permanent sets in it of the mess and various people's houses, I think. And then there were other houses dotted around. I remember um, Recall's house, or Recall, as I should say, um, his house was in um, a place in by the Horniman Museum in um, uh, towards kind of Camberwell, not Camberwell. Um, oh, what do, you, what do you call it? Lordship Lane in South London, anyway, on a very, very, very steep hill. I remember that location. So they were dotted all over the place. We, we the, the, the shouts, when I was there, the shouts tended to be filmed, a lot of them, in the, um, in the Greenwich um, Arsenal. Woolwich Arsenal uh, down there because it was this derelict kind of ex-army place which could be blown up and burnt with impunity. But I didn't see too many of those. I, I did a few shouts um, trying to be heroic. I remember there was one shot where I kicked a door in. But I think after that, the producers decided quite wisely that I was not exactly cut out for such macho behaviour and I was better off reserved for being a bit of a tit, really, and the rest of the time. And there we are. How does the name Kling Film come about? Right, I asked that, of course I did, because I turned up on set and I went, okay, fine, my name's Vernon Chivers, which is clearly a comedy name, apologies, if anybody that called Vernon is looking, but it's perceived as a comedy name and the comedy uh, nickname Kling Film. So I, of course, said, where does that come from? And I heard a few stories like, oh, he, you know, he, his personality will wrap something up and kind of make it sweat to death or something like that. But recently I saw um, Simon Sharkey, who's, um, who's an agent now. He's no longer a writer. He's an agent, um, an actor's agent. And uh, I saw him recently and I said to him, come on, what, where does it come from? And he went, oh, I was just writing in my kitchen one morning and there was some cling film on the side. So I'm afraid it's, the answer is very, uh, is very prosaic and dull. There we go. But I like, I like to think that cling film, it's, you know, I don't know, it, it feels apt somehow. It's kind of, kind of bizarre and clinical and thin and I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, that's it. I think that's all I've got to say about that. 
the um the camper van cling films camper van um that was quite that was quite a thing i enjoyed that part of the story very very much it was quite a, i think the 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 van which they used was um quite rare actually i think it's you know because it was kind of a well restored original vw camper van and i think it had some value attached to it because these things are collectors items and um yeah i spent many a happy afternoon in there especially with uh with mike garner playing um poison pierce chatting away and being idiots together in a camper van somewhere in south london it's a nice thing about being an actor because you do find yourself in in remarkable situations which you just couldn't imagine and i you know if you'd have said to me a year earlier oh you know, this time in a year you'll find yourself sitting in an orange camper van in someone's drive in south london pretending to be a fireman i'd go well, you're making that up it's ridiculous but there it was yeah I didn't, I, I don't think I ever, did I get to drive? Yes, I did get to drive the camper van. I was just remembering. I did. Not very often because it was valuable. But I did drive it around some streets shouting out, Bruno, Bruno, like that at one point. Yeah. An episode about my strange wife. Well, it was the whole thing was really good fun because, as I say, I turned up expecting to do two or three episodes and ended up doing 29, apparently. So my strange wife, Noreen. So I think the writers, Simon Sharkey being the main writer, but there were others on board. I think that, sorry, I've got an itchy foot. I keep bending down to scratch my foot. Um, uh, I think as it, as it grew, as it kind of went on, they sort of said to themselves, oh, great, we've got, we've got a real eccentric here in Kling Film. So they kind of increasingly looked for um, eccentric storylines. Um, me being the dullest man in the world to be stuck up on top of a, a cherry picker was one of them. I think that was quite funny. Um, but then Noreen, the wife, and I think that tied in, I can't quite remember, you might remember more than I actually, um, but I think that might have tied in with um, Poison Pierce having troubles with his marriage or, or something. So there was a kind of, there were ex-wives kind of in the, in the general ether, in the background, you know. Um, but yeah, that episode with, uh, with Noreen, who was, um, Eileen Davis was her name. And I think it was just one day of filming. So the, the odd thing about TV filming is you don't really, you know, it looks like you've spent a lot of time with people, but sometimes it can just be, you know, a day. And that was it. So I didn't know her before. And she came in and was mad Noreen, threatening me and um, Pierce with a knife or whatever and chanting kind of, anti-satanic uh chance and it was very funny yeah <laughs> it was hysterical um yeah can't remember it was up the road it was uh, was it was it old kent road that was where we filmed it there was a fire station on old kent road which was the one i was nominally attached to but the the, the rather genial joke in the whole thing was that um, we, I don't think we ever saw anybody else from the watcher at, at the other station, but they were as keen to get rid of me, <laughs> get rid of Clingville as anybody was. Um, so that whenever there was a chance, um, they uh, shifted me off to, to Blue Watch, uh, which, was, which was very nice, but it was, it was quite strange because I was never, um, I was never meant to be officially part of Blue Watch. So I always kind of was in this strange no man's land of um, all the other guys had been, I mean, as actors, they'd been working together for years and years and years and got to know each other. And I sort of, I tipped up occasionally and was playing this idiot. And, um, uh, which is very nice. They're all very nice chaps. We had a nice time, um, but I was never fully part of the watch and uh, and that's manifested itself in some strange ways for example all the other all the reg all the other regulars 
um, had uh, a fortnight's training as part of the brigade. So when he turned up and showered, they knew how to un undo a hose and all do all this. So they could look like they were familiar with the, um, with the stuff, you know, and with fire brigade, with brigade regulations and with uniforms and all the things people were familiar. I wasn't because I turned up for two episodes. So they weren't going to give me two weeks training. So when we went out on a couple of shouts, you know, I remember Nobby, who was the, the advisor, the brigade's advisor, and she said, you know how to do that, don't you? And I said, no, I've no idea how to do that. And indeed, on the first day of filming, <laughs> which was in Southwark Park, they got me to drive. I think it was the first shot even. I was driving an appliance. And I'd never driven a fire engine before. And they went, go on, sit in there. You've done that before. And I went, I haven't, I haven't. And um, so there were various things whereby it was, uh, it was kind of obvious to me that I was, I had not been, in, the character had not been intended to be as full on as it was. I think it's flattering because I think, it was because people found me funny and the writers found me funny and useful. There we are. Yes, the camper van catching a light. I can't remember now how it happened, but yeah, I mean, obviously there was a, um, there used to be various jokes played out by the writers on the series. For example, you know, versions of a cat stuck up a tree and those kind of cliches that the fire brigade kind of face and the bloke setting fire to his own uh, camper van uh, was obviously one of those. I can't quite remember. Was I in it at the time? I can't quite remember how it happened. It's a long time ago. Sorry. You asked what was it like working alongside the other cast members in London's Burning? Well, it was very nice. They were all nice chaps. But it's a very, it's a strange day on the, uh, it's a strange kind of life, um, TV recording or film recording, because you, it, you, you only meet everybody if you're filming a scene where everybody is there. Otherwise, you know, there would be episodes, for example, later on when I was living at Recall's house, there'd be episodes where I would just meet um, Ben on Orque, who, who was, you know, um, playing Recall, and um, and Mike Garner, and I and I just meet those, so I wouldn't. So there'll be a fortnight's film, or I wouldn't meet anybody. But it looked in the in the episode when it's all edited together, like you're you're all in the same uh, storyline. But they were they, they were nice chaps. Um, a lot of them have been doing it. Richard Walsh have been doing it. He, I think he was in the original the original Jack Rosenthal. Um, screenplay so he'd be doing a long time so in that time for them the other actors have seen hundreds of uh, different actors come in come and go away again and come in some of them stay for a few weeks and some of them there for just an hour uh, so there's a lot of toing and froing um, but it was very nice we had a, we had a jolly time I have to say yeah I'll tell you about working with Mike Garner. Um, he's a very, he's a very, very nice man. It's and it's one of the he's a very good actor. It's one of the tributes to him as an actor that he was so he he played the he played Poison Pierce so delicately. I think as being um, untrustworthy or somebody that people didn't like, but 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 so that the character didn't himself. He wasn't a baddie. He was just you know awkward like that um but it was it was it was good we had a good time together and we bumped into each other uh since and it's uh fine in fact i told him i told him that i was doing this interview today and he, he wished me luck so there we are yeah i think it was another one of those jokes that the writers enjoyed that the the, the least popular member of blue watch teamed up with the least other member of the fire brigade really and to watch us kind of um cope with each other and um it was quite nice because because pierce did have a kind of boring side to him whereby he was pedantic and plodding and all of that and cling film had that side where he was just a well he was a train spotter you know 
um, so that he would seize on a thing and and I'm I'm a bit like that myself actually I am he, he would just seize on a thing and know about it completely so if you ask him about I don't know the history of Stonehenge or something he'd go ah yes well Stonehenge of course was um, reputed to be um, the stones have brought from South Wales. You now need to have all these facts. So I think that kind of that and Pierce fitted in well. So it was. Uh, I hope it was entertaining that that uh, Cling Film's friendship with Pierce. I think it was. It seems to be a, a kind of popular thing. Yeah. Got a favourite character. Um. I think I, I think I like Pierce actually. I think he was interesting because uh, because he, he, he you know I think it was, it was partly because of Mike Garner's portrayal of him actually. I think he has steered a, a very interesting line between someone who was a bit mean spirited and someone who who wasn't. I think, but I I mean I I the thing is uh, when I got the part I'd never seen London's Burning when I got the role. So I turned up and I didn't know who anybody was. So I kind of did watch it a bit, but I, I was more familiar with the the characters as, as actors. So, um, you know, I didn't really know what uh, recall or recall <laughs> was like, but I did know what Ben on Watkway was like, you know. So that was a, a strange thing for me, yeah. Were there st any storylines I liked? Yes, I did like the I did like the uh, the whole thing about being at Recall's house, and b culminating in nor mad nor nutty Noreen, I think she was called to use a bit of alliteration there, with her turning up with the knife and the um, and all that. That was that was great fun. Um, but in terms of overall storylines, yeah, there were ones you see, for example, Hallam dying and that big storyline, that big shout. I wasn't involved in the filming of it. So that all went on when I wasn't there. Um, although I was there, I, I think I was in the scene for his memorial service and... Uh, and things like that so that in terms of storylines you know you you kind of involved in the bit what you see on what you see on screen is the days that the actors are there if you, the actors are not in that scene they weren't there filming so i was sort of unaware of the storyline <laughs> some of the time because it was just my scenes you know that's uh, that's the thing but any of the scenes filmed in a studio with a live audience no, no, I don't know if they, they did they ever do that? No, you, you tend to save that for um, out and out comedy. I have done that. I have, but not for London's Burning. I've filmed other things with a, with a yeah. Black Books, for example, episode three, I think. I mean, Black, Black Books, if you want to watch it. I play very much not cling film, but though he's still a twit, but uh, there we go. So uh, no, this is your answer. Um, the, there's, uh, I suppose there's two, um, uh, people often ask me where I got that, where I get that, that cling film voice from. And apart from it being obvious, because if you've got a bloke who's obsessively interested in various things, then that is kind of where you might go. Um, but the thing is, I, I knew a bloke at the time who was my, uh, who was my father-in-law who was the um who had a way of talking which was slow and pedantic and very accurate and um and uh, it, it, i feel a bit bad telling a story because he was the and he's he's no longer with us i'm afraid um but he was the nicest man in the world but he had this way of talking and um all of us who knew him used to kind of um, take the mickey behind his back, gently and lovingly. Um, so w when they said, oh, do a, as I said at the interview, do a funny voice, I, I kind of went into doing David. I went, well, there I go. That's, um, that's how I'm talking now. And it's very clear 
and rather slow and you have no you're left in no doubt whatsoever of the where the sentence is heading to <laughs> you know and all of that but what was funny about the story was that after in, when the when the series progressed you know sometime in the next year i had a conversation with with david who said to me yes chris he said yes that character that you're playing in london's burning yes that's a very funny character <laughs> he, he never knew that i was modeling at least a voice on uh, him so that was good um, and the other the other story was that they sent me they sent me up in a cherry picker i didn't like it at all it was terrifying and i had to be this kind of nerdy calm in the middle of it and it was really odd because those things wave we did this one shout which was rescuing they used to there's it's it's on the banks of the thames and chelsea wharf and there's now posh flats there uh but there used to be a bungee jump center there and we did a shout with a bungee where somebody had been the crane had broke or something and there was a bungee jumper stuck in midair and we had to go up and the cherry picker had to go up and pick him up and all day long we were up and down this cherry picker and it was absolutely terrifying the terror made even worse by the fact that all the bungee jumpers were these fearless antipodeans these kiwis and aussies who go great mate i'll fry myself off here great give us a bit of elastic on top you know they were just throwing themselves through the air um and I was stuck in this cherry picker being kind of terrified about, I don't know, I don't know how high they go, 80 foot in the air or something. The cameramen were also fearless. They would kind of strap themselves on with a, with a carabiner and kind of hang off the back to go, I'll get, oh, this is the shot. And um, this, this cherry picker was kind of waving around in the wind. You know, it was, uh, it was quite nerve wracking, that. Yeah. Um, I seem to remember that that uh, it was Nick, the station officer, um, Andrew, is the actor's called Andrew, I believe, isn't he? or is it, which was for the character? I think it was just, I think he was just there. I didn't have much, I don't remember I had much to do with him. So as I say, I just remember him as an actor. I mean, we have a, a cup of coffee and going, well, who are you then in the, in the green room, but rather than them. Um, I, 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 the, the actual mechanics of who was the officer in charge, I wasn't really familiar with. Can't help you there, I'm afraid. Have a, am I still in contact with any of the, the cast members? I'm not really. Uh, Mike Garner, occasionally we bump into each other and occasionally we send each other messages and we've bumped into each other at the theatre and stuff. But, um, What's strange, and I think Mike said this in his interview with that you did with him the other day. It's odd because it's a job, and it, and the job is to look like you're all mates with each other. And you know, we, we did get on well, but at the end of that, you go on to do another job, and you uh, you go on to do other work, and you meet other people. So, um, and I was I was not I was not in often enough to form long friendships or maybe i'm just maybe just nobody like me but um but you know i'm in, i'm in uh, i'm in facebook contact with a couple of the guys uh and and that but yeah but i would like to add it's i i've i'm fascinated because this is a long time ago we filmed this it's it's um and for viewers, by the way, this, my haircut, I normally do have longer hair. It's not quite the same dead straight parting as I had for cling film. It's normally a bit um, ragged. But uh, just, I mean, just say I had the, I had the best fun doing that job. It was really good because I was paid money to turn up and mess about um, oh, and there is something because I've seen somebody saying, oh, you should ask this question, which is this, that how much how much of the script was of cling film script was scripted and how much did uh, did I make up? You know, the answer is most of it was scripted, but lots of little vocal twitches, you know, 
and stuff. I, I would I would mess about with the lines to ju just to so you could say, oh, whoops a daisy, and you know, just do little vocal sillinesses. But in terms of storylines and all of that, that was all that was all written. Although it was a very nice thing because um, Paul Knight, who was the producer, uh, was very fair like this. Maybe it happens in other series as well. I don't know. But at the end of every series, the the writers and Paul would come round to the cast and they'll go, right, how are you feeling about your character? What would you like to see happen if it can be managed? What what can we do? So there was a kind of there was a movement amongst the London Burning production team to kind of keep the actors uh, happy like that and to say, well, what do you fancy doing? And um, so that was, a, that was, again, a very nice time. It was, a, it was a family. It did feel like a family. And I think that came down to, to Paul Knight, who was, a, who was a, a very good man, a very good man. And then it changed, of course, and, and a new producer came in and ITV kind of took it over and it all went in a different direction. And I, my, my character was written out in a quite a strange way, I feel. And, um, and lots of people changed. Lots of people, it all changed hands. The cameraman changed and all sorts of people when Paul, when Paul Knight left. Um, so, yeah, but it's been very, it's very nice that Kling Film sort of resonates with people, which is good. And I have, I have tried on occasions, I've got an idea at the moment to write a series whereby Kling Film in his camper van goes around the country dragging up old members of Blue Watch and seeing what they're up to, which I think would be a very funny series. But um, I'm not sure that any television company want to sponsor a super annuated git like me doing that. But if they do, if anybody out there is a TV executive producer and wants to put that series forward, I'm quite happy to write it. There we go. Yeah. Um, I, the, the other reason I've got this haircut short is because I filmed the final episode of my lock, uh, lockdown series, which is on YouTube, which is called The House That Nora Decorated, um, which Nora was my mum and I was living in her house, which was decorated in an extraordinary 70s style. It's 10 very short episodes. Uh, look it up on YouTube, The House That Nora Decorated. It's funny and it's... Uh, stupid and it'll make you cry. Thank you for watching and asking me questions. All right.